Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD Summer Full Four. So today, guys, I'm gonna do my preview for Arsenal versus Manchester City, guys. It's a big, big game in the Premier League, guys. So we will do a match reaction to this game tomorrow, along with the other Champions League games. This will probably be around five to ten minutes ish. Um, just because you know the Champions League is the main coverage, and plus I need to cover yesterday's games as well. So we're gonna go through a lot for tomorrow, guys. So stay tuned for that. Remember, guys, to subscribe to the channel to get notified, and obviously like this video if you did enjoy. Let's go and do this preview, guys. Let's do Arsenal versus Manchester City. We'll, we'll also do Combined 11 for fun as well. Um, I do want to go over to the preview first part, and then we'll do the Combined 11 towards the end. Um, so I hope you guys do not mind. This is a huge game, guys. Huge, huge game. I also want to talk about insights leading into this game as well. Uh, I love the insights, man. I love reading those insights. I, th I, th I think people should actually take the time to read these insights more. So let's go ahead and read this, man. So... Uh, let's start with Arsenal. Um, so let's actually look at the win probability for this. So win probability for Arsenal is 32%. Man City is 40%. Draw is 28 Arsenal have lost the last 10 Premier League games against Manchester City. Largest losing run against opponent in th their history. Manchester City won the last six away games against Arsenal competitions, as many as they had in the previous 61 visits to Emirates slash Herbury combined. No team has ever won seven consecutive away games against the Gunners before. Manchester is the only side Arsenal boss Mick Arteta has failed to beat the Premier League, losing all five of his meetings with them. Arsenal had a player sent off on both Premier League meetings with Manchester City last season. Granit Xhaka away, Gabriel at home, only against Newcastle between 2010 and 2011 have the Gunners had a red card in three consecutive Premier League games. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Arsenal have lost their last eight Premier League games against reigning champions, conceding at least two goals each time, six of those versus Manchester City. Last such victory was a 1-0 win over Leicester in April 2017. Guys, those are some very dooming stats for Arsenal. Those stats were very, very dooming for Arsenal. And I think Arsenal fans should be concerned about this. That being said, though, this season feels a bit different. Like, this season doesn't really feel like the Arsenal of old. This season, Arsenal just feels like a whole different team. And Arsenal just feels like so good at the moment. You look at the point table right now. Arsenal is on 51 points, 21 games played. Manchester United 22 points with 48 games points now keep in mind arsenal do have a game in hand and their game in hand i believe is against everton at, at home at emirates so keep that in the back of your head so that in manchester city let's go to actually talk about the permutations what it means so if manchester city wins this game they will basically draw a level with arsenal and would actually go above them because of their superior goal difference now if arsenal draw this game they would still stay remain in the top with 52 man city on 49 and if arsenal win now if arsenal win guys the gap is insane there will be a we would have a 54, six-point gap. That is insane, guys. So I think for Arsenal, man, you're looking into this game and saying that, yeah, this is a huge game. Because this, for me, is one of the title-deciding games of the Premier League. This is a title-deciding game, guys. And I think this is a game that is going to mean a lot for both teams here. Because I think if both teams win this game, it puts them in a great position. Because I'm looking at Arsenal in particular here and that they need to win this game. Because I don't really believe they could win the game at the Emirates. I'm sorry, at um, Etihad Stadium in a few weeks' time. Because that's going to take place April 26th. So they're gonna, it's going to be a long time since then, right? Whereas for Manchester City, they're coming into this game and saying that, yeah, we could probably win the home game at home. And then if we can nick a draw, even win, we're in a really good position. But the thing is with Arsenal is that this season, that they feel different. This Arsenal team feels very cohesive. They're playing very well as a unit, and this is a very, very big game for them. So let's go ahead and look at the potential possible 11s for both teams here. We'll also look at injuries as well. Arsenal, we're going to see Ramsdale starting goal. There is no doubt about it. Ramsdale will start and go 100%. Um, this is pretty much a no-brainer. Let me zoom in real quick if you guys cannot see. Um, so Ramsdale will definitely start and goal. And then obviously Zinchenko, I think, will play left back against his former team. He can make a statement there. Center backs, Gabriel Saliba will obviously be playing. Um, Saliba is going to have to have a good game though, because recently I, I've noticed he's been kind of been a, a bit underperforming. And then obviously Ben White is going to be playing at the right back position. And then the midfield man, the midfield of Dua, Xhaka and Partey. And then obviously the front four being Martinelli, Odegaard, Saka and, and Kateo. As for Manchester City, we're going to expect to see Grealish on the left, Holland in the middle, Mars in the right. And then obviously Silva, Rodri, De Bruyne, Walker, Akanji, Laporte, Ake and Ederson. Injuries for both teams. John Stones is injured. And for Arsenal, you have Neil Nelson, El Nenny, Gabriel Jesus, and Emil Smith-Rowe. Head-to-head -head record. Coming into this game, Arsenal have 9 wins, 6 draws, and Manchester City got 19 wins. Last time Arsenal beat Manchester City, for those that don't know, was actually right here, guys, the FA Cup. That is the last time Arsenal beat Manchester City, which was July 18, 2020. 
That was every cup, and that is the last time Arsenal have beaten Manchester City. Since then, Manchester City have always gotten the result. They've always won. Okay, looking into the form in both teams here, guys. Both teams are coming into this game in relatively even form. You can make an argument that Arsenal have better form with two wins and one draw. Um, actually, Manchester City are coming into this game with better form with only one loss in the last five games. That being said, though, Manchester City this season haven't been that great. They've lost a lot of away games this season. You know, they lost away to Manchester United. They lost away to Liverpool. They lost away to Tottenham. And obviously, um, you know, they've struggled. I think the only away game they've won this season has been Chelsea away. And, you know, Chelsea has been in free fall at the moment. So, whereas Arsenal, as far as the top six games concerned, they have beaten Manchester United at home. They lost the reverse fixture, though. They beat Liverpool this season at Emirates. And then, obviously, they also beat, um, what is it called, Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. And I believe they, yeah, they did the double over Tottenham. So Arsenal actually have better form, had a better form coming into this game against the top six than Manchester City do. I think the interesting thing with this game is that it's going to come down to can Arsenal nullify Holland? Because Holland actually hasn't scored against any of the top six teams on the road, which I think is very, very interesting. And Holland is going to try to break that record because this is the last game to do so. Because Holland has played all the away games possible and he's got zero goals. And this is his chance. To destroy that record. As for Arsenal. As I said. Can they nullify Holland And can they nullify KDB? Because I think that's going to be important. Because I think if they can nullify Holland and KDB. I think they can beat the City team. Because as I said guys. This City team don't feel as free flowing as they usually are. They don't feel as. They feel more predictable. More straightforward. More easy to bypass and gauge. Whereas um, Manchester City in the years past. Have always been unpredictable. Their wingers have always been. Really good. And that's the thing with this Manchester City team is that their defense is very shaky. Defensively, there are, there are very vulnerable spots there. And we even saw in the FA Cup game where Manchester City actually had to struggle out to beat Arsenal. And Arsenal didn't even play their best 11. And I think the crucial thing is Odegaard and Saka. Because Martinelli, for me, has been really, really poor. And I actually would question Arteta. Like, should Martinelli start this game? Because I actually would make a... I would actually vouch for Trossard. I think Trossard should actually start the last game start this game because he scored the goal against um, Brentford. And I understand that Arsenal didn't win the game. They tied, but he scored the winning goal. He scored the goal that gave Arsenal the lead at the time. And I think that's really, really important. And obviously, Gabriel Saliba are going to have to do a good job as a defensive partnership at the back. And obviously, fullback Zinchenko White is going to have to have a good job on marking the um, City players, of course. So it's going to be a very, very difficult game to call, guys. I think it's going to be a very, very difficult game to call. I think this will be very, very difficult to see what happens. And I think for key for Manchester City, as I said, is that KDB and Holland have to turn up. Because I just don't really know if Bernardo Silva is going to turn up. He's been really poor this season. Mahrez has not really been that great. Grealish has at times performed well. Rodri has been kind of error prone recently. He's made a lot of mistakes in the last couple of games. And yeah, I just don't think the City team has been as good as the other City teams we've seen in the past. Now, that being said, this is still Manchester City. They're still a great team. So I wouldn't put it past them. And as I said for Arsenal, man. Can Nketiah turn up in this game? Because that's also another question mark for him as well. There's a lot of mid, uh, there's a lot of interesting things. So let's go ahead and do the combined 11, and then I'll give you guys a prediction. Combined 11, guys. Combined 11. Okay, so let's start with manager. Mikel Arteta or Pep Guardiola. If we're going by this season, I'm going to go with Mikel Arteta. Simply because of the fact of what he's been doing with this Arsenal team. He's made them overperform. He's made this team into a team where they're actually a serious team, you know, and don't get me wrong, Pep Guardiola's done great. It's just that I don't think Pep has been that great. Um, and considering where Man City have been this season, I think Arsenal have just been better. So, yeah. Anyways, going to do a 4-3-3 formation. So, goalkeeper was really, really difficult, guys. We have Ramsdale versus Ederson. Now, let's go actually look at the clean sheet record. So, Ramsdale has kept how many clean sheets? Uh, da 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 doesn't say here. I wish it said here in the statistics thing. Um, maybe it's, it might say here or something. Let's see. I want to see, like, there's a way I can see the stats or something. Oh, let me check in a new tab. Stats, maybe this is a, let's see right here, Arsenal. Uh, and, okay, let's see, clean sheets. Is there not a clean sheet stat? There should be a clean sheet stat. Clean sheet, nine clean sheets. We're going to base this off of how many, who's got the most clean sheets. So, Ederson, how many clean, uh, that's the wrong thing. Um, Ederson, let me look at this. This is difficult, guys. This is difficult because I don't think it's a straightforward answer. Stats. Let's see. Ederson, how many clean sheets? Eight. So Ramsdale actually takes this, guys. Ramsdale's actually got one more clean sheet than Ederson. So 
Ramsdale is actually going to be my keeper, guys. He's going to be my keeper. I'm going to give him the slight edge, and Ramsdale is going to be my keeper. You can make an argument for Ederson. Um, I'm going to go with Ramsdale personally, though, on this one. So, um, right back. Right back for me, it's got to be um, Kyle Walker. I think Ben White, for me, as good as he is, I have to notice that sometimes he doesn't play that well. And obviously, being a makeshift right back, it's difficult to really be that amazing. So, yeah, I, I, I just think that for me, I'm going to go with Walker. I think Walker is the more experienced one. And yeah, wait, what, where is it? Wait, where's Kyle Walker? Kyle Walker should be there. I'm not putting Walker Zimmerman. Uh, for those that don't know, that's another Walker. Wait, where? Walk? Yeah, there we go. Okay, center backs. For me, I'm going to put um, Gabriel. I think Gabriel has been really underrated, and I think a lot of Arsenal, a lot of people should appreciate him more. I think he's been amazing for um, Arsenal this season. So I'm going to put Gabriel there, actually. Um, and we're going to do with everyone available, even if you're injured, by the way. Other center back, I'm going to actually put Akanji. I think he's been really, really good. I think he's been City's one of City's best center backs. An argument can be made for John Stones. I'm going to personally go with Akanji, though, on this one. But you can go with Stones if you want, uh, personally, if you want. Left back for me, it's between Zinchenko and... Uh, who's that guy? I forgot his name. He's that City guy. John uh, Rico Lewis. Um, for me, though, is Zinchenko. I think Zinchenko, for me, it's been incredible for Arsenal. And um, I'm going to go with Zinchenko, personally, for me. Uh, I think it's been a phenomenal for Arsenal. CDM? Now, this is really tough. Partey or Rodri? Ugh, it's a difficult one, guys. It's a difficult one. This is a really, really difficult one. I want to include both, to be fair. You know what? Let's do both. I think that's actually a more appropriate thing to do. And we'll do like a 4-3, um, 4 2 three, one. Let's do that. So we can accommodate both. Because I think it's a bit unjustice. We just inc don't include both. So, yeah, let's do Partey and Rodri. I think both deserve to be there. Um, they've both been amazing. You can even make an argument for Xhaka. I just think Partey... I just think Partey's been better, though. So, yeah, anyways. The Cam. KDB or Odegaard? Guys, it's really, really difficult. But I'm actually going to go with Odegaard this season. I think Odegaard has been a much better player than KDB. I respect KDB. I think KDB is still the better player overall speaking. But if we're going by this season, I think Zin I think Odegaard for me just takes it. Right mid. Um, striker is going to be Holland. Obviously, it's going to be Holland. There's no doubt about it. Um, right mid. It's going to be Bukayo Saka. I think Saka has been amazing this season for Arsenal. Uh, phenomenal. And the left mid, guys, it's really, really difficult because you have Martinelli, Trossard, you got Grealish. Uh, it's a difficult one, guys. Difficult, difficult one. I... Actually, let me look at the stats. Let's look at the stats, guys, because I actually am, I actually don't know, guys. Let's see who's got more stats. So, Martinelli's got seven goals and two assists. How about Jack Grealish? Jack Grealish has got two goals and three. Yeah, it's, it's got to be Martinelli. It's got to be Martinelli. Martinelli... Um, I'm going to be putting down here. So, that is my combined 11, guys. What a combined 11 this is. I think this is a great combined 11. I think I made it pretty fair. I think Manchester City got their fair representatives. Um, you know, Holland obviously being the most standout one. And let's see, how many Manchester City players make this? Holland, Rodri, um, two, Zinchenko. Oh, sorry, not Zinchenko. Uh, Kanji makes it. Walker, eh, four. Damn, we got more Arsenal players. I didn't even realize this. <laughs> more Arsenal players, man. More Arsenal. But that, that just shows how good Arsenal have been this season. I think that just shows. Anyways, time for a prediction. I'll uh, round it off here, guys. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with the 1-1 draw. I'm going to go with the 1-1 draw. I was tempted to go with... Um, I was tempted to go with um, Manchester City to win this. But I think Arsenal will just be... They will just have their... Uh, they will just be solid. And I think this will be a close game. I think... What's going to happen is I think Arsenal will actually take the lead. And then I think Manchester will equalize in the second half. And then I think Arsenal will be disappointed. And I just have a feeling it's going to be like that. And I have a feeling Arsenal, the goal scorer for them, is going to be... I'm going to say Bukayo Saka. And for Manchester City, I believe it's going to be Bernardo Silva. I don't know why, but I just think it's going to be Bernardo Silva. So anyways, if you made it this far, please consider that like button. Hit the subscribe button as well. Comment up with your thoughts. Comment subscribe below, guys. I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow for the live stream at 5 o'clock Eastern Time. And yeah, guys, I hope you guys do enjoy. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.